Are you ready to skip knee replacement surgery? Try these game-changing alternatives. This is Dr. P, Dr. Mark Petropoli. As you know, got a problem with your knee? Call Dr. P. Today we're going to talk about knee replacement surgery, but more importantly, avoiding knee replacement surgery. There are ways that people can avoid knee replacement surgery. So I'm, I just Googled and these are the top five that came up and I'm just going to go through them. The first one was low impact exercises or low impact activity, and that's great because impact loading means you're pounding, you're putting, you like might be running, jumping, those types of things. That's called impact loading exercise. And that does put more force on your joints. It puts more force on your muscles. As we get older, our muscles get a little weaker. Our joints may start to wear down and we may gain some weight. And all that is gonna put more force across those joints. So by doing lower impact or non-impact exercises, that's gonna put less force across the joint because the more force that's going across an abnormal joint, the more pain you're gonna have. So things that are either non-weight bearing or low impact exercises are things like swimming. That's a great one. There's really no impact. Walking is less impact than running, but it's still considered an impact loading exercise. If someone doesn't have really bad arthritis, walking's fine. But sometimes if their arthritis is bad, we'll tell them not to walk for exercise. Obviously, they have to walk around for their daily activities. But something like riding a bike would be a lot less lower impact. Now, I'll always tell patients to make sure the seat is high enough so that their knee almost goes fully extended when they get to the downstroke. Because if the seat's too low, a lot of people have arthritis under the kneecap. And when your knee is bent like that, it's just going to grind that arthritis and hurt more. So I always tell patients to have the seat high enough so that their knee almost goes extended. There's other forms of exercise that are low impact, like elliptical. Patients always ask about that. That's a little maybe higher stress than riding a bike or swimming, but your feet are on the ground and you're putting some weight through. So I think that is another good form of a low impact exercise. The next on the list was losing weight. So when we walk, we land with about four times body weight. So for every pound you are overweight, you're putting an extra four pounds across like your hip, your knee, your ankle, because those are the joints that you're walking on. You're not walking on your hands and your shoulders and your elbows unless you walk on your hands. Then you would be putting that force across those joints. Anyway, for every pound when you walk, it's about four pounds. So imagine if you're 10 pounds overweight, that's 40 extra pounds of force coming across the joint just with walking, not with running. If you're running, it might be up to 10 times more. So 10 times 10 is 100 pounds more force going across if you're 10 pounds overweight. And I hate to say it, but there's a lot of people who are 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 pounds overweight. So even if you're 100 pounds overweight and you multiply that times four, which is the amount of force going across your joints when you're walking, and that's 400 pounds more weight going across. So losing weight is going to be a very important way to take the force off your joints. Again, our muscles are the main shock absorber, so the low impact exercises to strengthen those muscles, that is going to take some of the force off the, the joint, especially if the joint is damaged, but losing weight is huge. And we have a lot of different talks on losing weight. We have a whole system in our office called B-Slim. We have a genetic-based nutrition program. That's in some of these other links down here if you look at these. Now, the third thing that I found on my Google search was physical therapy. And I'm a big fan of physical therapy. I think it's great. Most physical therapists nowadays are very, very, very well trained. They actually have a doctorate in physical therapy. They're doctors of physical therapy. So these are extremely highly trained medical professionals who know how to take care of patients who have pain or dysfunction. They help decrease the pain and they help improve function and even optimize function. And how do they do that? Well, it's not just, hey, I go ride that bike or go lift those weights. They have different things they can use like modalities, meaning they can use ultrasound, they can use certain forms of electrical stimulation. A lot of times just hands-on stuff to get the swelling out, get the range of motion back, get the tightness out. Then they may progress to the strength and the exercises. And a lot of times they'll progress with very 
low impact or low force exercises first because if a patient's in pain they're not going to just you know be able to go lift weights and do deadlifts and things like that it's a progression so they're experts at helping patients you know get the swelling down get the range of motion back get their flexibility back and absolutely work on strengthening because again your muscles are your main shock absorber what your muscles don't absorb then your joints have to absorb and if your joints are wearing out or your joints have an abnormality they're going to hurt so the stronger you make those muscles the less force is going to go across the joint not to mention if you build muscle you will lose weight because muscles burn energy and burn calories more than fat or other tissues do so muscle is a very potent calorie burner so the more muscle you build yeah you might gain some weight but you're actually going to burn calories you're going to burn fat better so strengthening has a lot of other benefits and going to a physical therapist most insurances cover that now that's the good news the bad news is the insurance model for quote standard physical therapy isn't really the greatest in the world meaning most patients who have knee pain okay yes they have a problem with their knee but a lot of times there's a problem with the hip above it the ankle might be tight below it their core might be weak their upper body and their posture might be affecting their lower body all these things combine and it may take an hour hour and a half two hours to really get someone kind of fixed and really unfortunately the insurance model it's not the physical therapist's fault but you know they're paid for hey 20 minutes or 30 minutes and you know we're only going to concentrate on the knee because we can't concentrate on all these other things at once the insurance won't approve that or pay for that in that regard sometimes the insurance model can be tough but in general i love physical therapy i love the idea of getting range of motion back, getting function back, getting strength back. It's very important. And I think a lot of people can avoid knee replacement just by doing that. The fourth thing that I found when I Googled this was joint supplements. So supplements are not drugs. They're not regulated by the FDA like drugs. They're, they don't have to be prescribed. They do have their own set of rules and regulations, but it's not nearly as stringent or as rigorous as a drug that we prescribe, for instance. So I don't technically prescribe supplements because patients can just go get them over the counter. You can order them online, you can get them at your local pharmacy. They're all over the place. Certain doctor's offices carry them. We don't carry them at this point, but we have carried them in the past. And so supplements can help, but I just want to give a little caveat. I think eating a very well balanced diet is probably more important than taking supplements having said that not everybody can always eat a well balanced diet or knows how to so supplements can play a part but how do supplements play a part in knee arthritis for instance or for helping someone avoid a knee replacement because there's all kinds of different supplements out there so the most common supplement i would say that's used for knee arthritis or for helping quote support the knee or knee pain is glucosamine and chondroitin sulfate. Those are long words, but glucosamine and chondroitin sulfate are basically the building blocks, the things that our cartilage is made out of. And all our joints have cartilage. For the knee, for instance, we have the thigh bone and the shin bone, the femur and the tibia, and there's cartilage on the end of the bone that looks kind of like the white on the end of a chicken bone, if you've ever seen that before. It's kind of like the tread on a tire. When that tread wears down, that's what arthritis is. So is there anything we can take Maybe if we eat the glucosamine and the chondroitin sulfate, which the cartilage is made out of, it'll automatically go into our joint and rebuild it and grow back new cartilage. Well, that's not how it works. And there's no evidence at all, actually, that shows that eating glucosamine and chondroitin sulfate will grow back new cartilage. No definitive evidence that I know of. However, there is some evidence that it may protect the cartilage that we have left. And, there is, and that makes sense. Eating a good nutritious diet that has all the building blocks for collagen is going to help prevent that collagen and that cartilage from wearing down. So as I said, a good diet's important, but supplements can help perhaps with slowing down the breakdown. And there are some, some studies that, that show or trends to it may help with the knee pain. Now, some of that could be placebo where, hey, I'm just taking something and I think it's gonna work and it works. Great, if it works and you wanna spend the money on it and it's not harming you, that's fine. But I do think, and this is my opinion, that there, you know, based on taking it myself and patients who take it, you gotta take it usually for a few months for it to kinda of kick in. But it can give a mild pain relieving effect, a mild increased range of motion or flexibility effect. And it's not earth shattering, but 
in general, it can't hurt. Now, there are people who are allergic to the components. If you're allergic to shellfish or you're allergic to the glucosamine and the chondroitin sulfate, chondroitin sulfate usually comes from shellfish. So if you have a shellfish allergy, that could be a problem. And the glucosamine usually comes from animal products. So if you're a vegan or you're plant-based, you, you may want to take that into consideration. And if you're allergic to any of those types of things, take that into consideration. Not to mention, you know, I'm not giving you medical advice. You got to talk to your, your primary care, your main doctor and say, hey, I want to take this stuff. Can I take it? Is it going to interact with my medications? Number one. Number two, I always tell patients, hey, ask your pharmacist, you know, because they always ask me what brand is best. I have no idea. There's a ton of brands out there. There's certain brands I know of, but I always tell them to ask their pharmacist what they think the best, safest brand is. And so that's what they do. So glucosamine chondroitin sulfate is probably the most common supplement for knee arthritis. Hyaluronic acid is another one. You've probably heard of that. It's in cosmetics. It's all over the place. Hyaluronic acid is basically the main component of our joint fluid. Okay. So not only do we have cartilage, but we have fluid in there and that fluid acts kind of like motor oil. So it's very lubricating fluid. And so when we get arthritis, that fluid thins out. It's not as good of a lubricant as it used to be. So can eating hyaluronic acid or taking it as a supplement go automatically into my knee and make my fluid better? It probably doesn't work that way. But the components of that hyaluronic acid are what hyaluronic acid is made out of. So you're eating the components that your body's gonna break down and then your body is going to make its own hyaluronic acid. That's kind of how it works. Your body breaks down the things you eat and then it makes the different things, whether it be protein, whether it be you know, bone, whether it be joint fluid, whether it be cartilage, your body makes that stuff. But if you're not taking in the right building blocks, it can't make that. So it can kind of help that way. Again, I don't think there's any definitive studies that show that if I take hyaluronic acid supplements, that it's going to make my knee fluid better. But there's some anecdotal evidence that there are patients who take it and feel as though it helps their pain, helps their flexibility. I have another video on collagen. So there's a thing called Knox NutriJoint or certain collagen supplements that you can take and there are some studies that show that that may help with knee pain or flexibility as well again none of these are earth shattering or definitive and again i always say you're better off taking you know a good diet a well-balanced diet but most of the time these supplements aren't going to hurt you always ask your primary care and ask your pharmacist and then the final thing that i looked up how do i avoid a knee replacement was injections okay this is a big long topic probably too long for just this part of the video, but there are different types of injections. So cortisone is one type. Cortisone is an anti-inflammatory. It's a natural substance that our adrenal glands make back there on top of our kidneys. But cortisone in, that you get from a doctor, whether you take it by mouth or an injection, is manufactured in a factory somewhere. In any event, cortisone is a potent anti-inflammatory. So if you have swelling or inflammation, it can make that swelling or inflammation go down. But it's temporary. It's kind of like a Band-Aid. The effects last maybe six weeks at most. And unfortunately, it has some harmful side effects, especially if you get too many. So cortisone can decrease healing. Cortisone can increase the risk of infection. And there are studies that show that cortisone can actually increase the rate of the development of arthritis. So it's something that I rarely use, but very occasionally, if somebody, for instance, has a golf tournament and they need to have that swelling down on their knee within two or three days, sometimes, that might be something that we use. But in general, I don't like to use it because it's temporary and it, it definitely can cause harm, especially when it's used too often, which a lot of times it is. How about gel injections or hyaluronic acid injections? So not only can you take hyaluronic acid as a supplement by mouth, but you can actually, a doctor like myself, can actually inject it using a needle into a joint. Now it's only FDA approved for knee use, it can be used quote unquote off label in other joints. And that just means that it has an FDA use. You tell the patient, hey, you know, your shoulder joint has cartilage in it and it has joint fluid, just like your knee joint does. This isn't technically approved by the FDA for shoulders because they didn't do studies on that, but it is the same type of joint. And if you're okay with using it on your shoulder, we can use it on your shoulder. And that's what off label is. But sometimes insurance companies won't pay for an off label injection, just as an FYI. In any event, by injecting the artificial joint fluid into the joint, it thickens up the joint fluid. So when we get arthritis, the normal fluid in our joint thins out. It's not as good of a lubricant as it used to be. 
So there's companies that make these artificial joint fluid shots. Now, interestingly, it comes from rooster combs. Okay, that's where it originally comes from. So you can eat a whole bunch of rooster combs and get your hyaluronic acid instead of having to take supplements. And that's a healthy way to get it. So anyway, somebody figured out, hey, whoever's eating these rooster combs, their joints don't hurt. And the people who aren't eating the rooster combs, uh, you know, their joints tend to hurt more. Someone figured that out way back when. But when they figured that out, then they look at the rooster combs and, hey, what's in these things? Well, hyaluronic acid is it. They're high in hyaluronic acid. So a company either will extract it from rooster combs. That's the natural way to do it. But if you have an allergy to chicken, eggs, feathers, things like that, you got to be careful. So there are certain brands that are made from rooster combs. And then there are certain brands that are made by genetically engineering bacteria to make it. And it's done in a lab and in a factory. So there are different types of hyaluronic acid injections. But the bottom line is you inject it into the joint. I inject it into the joint with a needle and it thickens up the fluid. Okay. But it doesn't stay in there forever. Your body probably absorbs it within a few days on average. But as it does that, it stimulates your joint to produce better fluid. Our joint has a casing capsule around it and when the inside of that casing there are cells synoviocytes cells that secrete the fluid so when there's arthritis they're not working the way they should so when you put that artificial joint fluid in there the body resorbs it and it stimulates those cells to produce better fluid so it does tend to last longer than a cortisone shot it doesn't have the negative side effects of increasing the risk of infection if you have to have a surgery or increasing joint wear and tear like cortisone can do or even decreasing healing like cortisone can do so i like it a little bit better and it can either be one shot or it can be up to one shot a week for five weeks i do think in my experience i've been doing these since for 25 years at least and my experience is that the people who get the one shot a week for five weeks it does tend to last longer but you got to come in once a week for five weeks to get a shot and it's temporary. On average, it lasts about six months. Some people last longer. Some people, it doesn't last that long. But on average, it lasts about six months. So technically, if the insurance company is going to pay for it, they usually cover it every six months. So these people have to go through between one and five injections every six months to get that relief. Whereas, what I'm going to talk about next, PRP, platelet-rich plasma, is I think a better alternative. And it's using your own healing powers, your own body's healing powers, not something made in a factory, not something from a rooster comb or an animal. We're gonna use your own blood, which has amazing healing properties in it. And we're gonna isolate the platelets. So it's a simple blood draw. It's less blood than you would take to donate blood at a blood donation. And there's certain things in your blood called platelets okay now there's the red blood cells the white blood cells the platelets there's antibodies there's fluid there's proteins all kinds of different things in your blood the platelets are those things that when you cut yourself they form a scab and they stop the bleeding so they stop the bleeding but they also have growth factors and they release those growth factors and those growth factors stimulate new blood vessels and cells to come in the area so think of them as growth factors or fertilizer or just healing they have healing properties these platelets do so if we can take some of your blood and spin it down in a centrifuge, okay, that's like a washing machine going around really fast, the different components of the blood, the red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, etc., all have different weights and they settle out in different layers. And so we take that layer of the platelets, which is kind of like a supercharged fertilizer or growth factor plug, and it's like a fluid, but it can be either light or dark in color depending on the type we use. Now, I'm not gonna get into the different types, that's a whole different talk, but to inject inside of a knee, we're usually gonna use what we call leukocyte pore. So that means less white blood cells. White blood cells cause inflammation, so we don't want to cause inflammation inside the joint that's already inflamed. And so we take leukocyte pore PRP and inject it into the joint. And similar to like the gel injections, I'm not saying it cures the arthritis, it doesn't grow back new cartilage, but it lasts longer on average than the gel injections and the cortisone injections. It actually helps healing. It doesn't decrease healing like cortisone and it's using your own tissue. So that's what PRP is. On average, if it works, about 80% of the people, it may last up to two years, sometimes even longer. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but you haven't really burned any bridges, just like if cortisone hasn't worked or gel injections haven't worked, you haven't really burned any bridges. Whereas if you get a knee replacement and it doesn't work, now you're stuck with metal, plastic, and cement forever. So it's always worth trying these things 
before going to that big surgery, metal, plastic, cement, etc. Now, the final type of injection I'm going to talk about is bone marrow cells. So bone marrow has stem cells and it has other cells that help stem cells. These are not stem cell injections though because in the United States we are not allowed to take someone's bone marrow cells or you can actually get stem cells from fat for that matter. We can't take your stem cells, send them to a lab, grow them, culture them, multiply them, mail them back and then inject them back into you. We can't even really take them from you, go into a different room, manipulate them and bring them back in and inject them in you. What we can do is we can take your bone marrow, either using a special needle to concentrate it or a centrifuge, similar to what we talked about with the PRP, where it spins down and concentrates up the cells. There are special needles that also can do that. You can use a combination of both, but the bottom line is we can take your own healing tissues from your bone marrow, we can concentrate it, and it doesn't leave the room. It's coming directly from you. People have amazing healing properties, but we take it and, and inject it into the knee. Now that does have cells in it, and cells are what do the work. Our cells do the work, okay? So those cells can go in there and they can help repair and remodel that joint. Those cells actually can go in there and they can tell other cells that are kind of not functioning the way they should function, they can tell those cells, hey, wake up, do this, do that, make better fluid, get rid of that inflammation, produce better fluid. And that's how those bone marrow cells that have stem cells and other cells that help the stem cells work. People always think of stem cells as, hey, I'm gonna put stem cells in the knee, it's gonna grow back new cartilage and my knee's gonna be like it was when it, when it was 18. We're not there yet. We will get there someday, but we're not there yet. There are studies that show that bone marrow cells or adipose cells that have stem cells can grow back some cartilage on the end of the bone, but not perfect yet. So what it really does is it remodels that joint and it does tend to last longer than any of these other treatments. Again, these are generalities. You might get a bone marrow injection, it might do zero for you, but you also may be one of these people who it lasts four years on and helps you either put off or avoid a knee replacement altogether. Those biologic procedures that we're doing are really, that's the tip of the spear, and that's really where things are gonna go. And eventually, we're not gonna need metal, plastic, cement. We're gonna be able to grow new cartilage back. We're gonna be able to hopefully prevent cartilage from wearing down, that's even the next step. But we're not there yet. So these are the best options that we have. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. Give us a thumbs up, we'd be very happy about that. And subscribe to our channel, Victory in Motion. We'll keep you in motion, and remember, this is Dr. P. If you have a problem with your knee, call Dr.